Thank you everybody for being part of this study. This is going to be a very interesting one. It is entitled, How Was the 144,000's Identity and Legacy Stolen? Yes, that is a serious question. How can that be? This is by William Emanuel, Doctor of Engineering, and Doctor of Divinity, usually known as Dr. Eman, the energy and the electric man. <clears throat> well, to start this off, we need to cover a little bit of background. I hope everyone has heard of Josephus, and we're reading in his book of Antiquity, chapter five. Notice what it says. There were some also who passed over the sea in ships and inhabited the islands. And some of those nations do still retain the denominations which were given them by their first founders. The denominations mean the name of the land. Okay, like Kemet, like, um, Um, I guess we can say India, like Kush, land of Kush. So there's different names that were given by their original founders. But some have lost them also. That means some people do not still have the name of their founders. So the question should be asked, well, what name are they given? Or what name do they go by? And some have only admitted certain changes to them that they might be more intelligible to the inhabitants. So here it's letting us know that some lost their names and then some people are admitting that they made changes to other people's names to make it more intelligible that a certain group of people who have conquered them or have taken over the land that they can better understand. So they give them new names. And they were the Greeks who became the author of such mal malutation. So what they do is these Greeks, they go through and they amalgamate. So they make things that were into something that it isn't and make it appear as if it is. Notice what else it says. This is on the inhabitants of the world. For when in after ages, they, who's the they, the Greeks grew potent. They claimed to themselves the glory of iniquity given names to the nations. See, that's what we were just talking about. People's names were changed. That sounded well in Greek. So what did it sound? They said it sounded well in Greek. And they, what? Became potent, became arrogant. Greeks. And they claimed to themselves something that they never had, which was the glory of antiquity. They are not the ancient people. They do not have antiquity. But they claim they do now, and we teach that they do. Notice what it says, for when the Greeks, after ages, when the Greeks grew potent, when the Greeks claimed to themselves the glory of the antiquity, they created the greatest iniquity, giving names to the nations that sounded well in Greek, like Egypt instead of Kemet, like Ethiopia instead of Nubia or Kush, that they might be better understood amongst themselves. So they were saying, hey, we're going to rename this, the Greeks said, we're going to make it sure that all Europeans and everybody else around the world better understand it through our identity and what we say better understood by themselves, and setting agreeable forms of government over them. So the Greeks would do what they conquer you and then set up a what? Governments over you. So they conquered all the way to India. So they what? 
they named, um, they, they set up a, a new pharaoh in Egypt. It wasn't a Virgil pharaoh, it wasn't an African. They set up their own, a Greek, okay? setting agreeable forms of government over them as if they were the people derived from themselves. So now they're acting as if the, 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 the um, Alexander, the Library of Alexander, and all of these libraries and all the college and all the different things that the Greeks had, now the Greeks got potent and said it is ours and it begins with us. And that's what we call a stolen legacy. Okay, so at this time, we're going to start reading out of the book. People of Color in the Bible. Volume 1, Preliminaries Establishing a Foundation. We're just reading the introduction. The book that you are about to read addresses some of the major questions that exist about the ethnicity of the people in the Bible, the Torah, and the Quran, or K spelled with the K-O-R-A-N, most people today assume that the people living in lands mentioned in these books at the time of your of their writing are the same people who occupy these lands today. Nothing could further from nothing could be further from the truth. Today's population reflects centuries of movement, intermarrying, and conquest. As a matter of fact, today's world population contains people the Holy Book don't mention at all. Okay. Here in our first paragraph, what we're trying to is make it clear is that we're going to be studying not just from the Bible, but we'll be, there's the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, and Quran and other holy books that, and history books. <clears throat> that actually go back in and talk about the ancient world. <clears throat> Excuse me, the reason why we do that is because today, like today when we're in America, if you think about it, the people that call Americans, are they the true Americans? Mm. Are they? Mm -hmm. no. no. Okay, who are they? Europeans. Okay, Europeans. African, mm -hmm. Chinese, different people mm -hmm. from all different walks of life. And the yeah, true Native American yeah. is basically put on concentration camps or reservations, as they call them. And also, at the same time, um, those that had to flee south during their warfare with the Europeans who try to come back in, which we call Mexicans, or as if they're labeled illegal aliens. Mm. So basically what we find out is that history has been changed so much that those who are the true Native Americans are called illegal aliens, and those mm. who have wiped out their true Native people who are the true illegal aliens are now um, are the Americans. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important thought that we should understand as we study the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about who's living today in Egypt? Well, yeah, I want to know. The, are, are they Africans? Well, from the last picture that I saw on the media, I didn't see not one African. And when well, I was African, I, I didn't see not one uh, people of color. The hair wasn't anything that was described in the scriptures, their skin color, um, their language. So who are they? I don't know who they are. You going to tell us that. They're the Arabs. They'll tell you the Arabs. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Arabs have colonized. They, the Arabs have done to Egypt what the Europeans have done to America. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, so those are Arabs there. When you talk about and you look at Libya, which everybody's complaining about, who are they? Same light skinned yeah. people. More Arabs. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Okay, so basically North Africa 
which they call, um, some will, you'll find the phrase as white Africa. Mm -hmm. And everything south of um, the second cataract, everything south of Egypt, now they say that's black Africa. But there's a white Africa and a black Africa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what they're saying is that these are the people who are controlling that region. <clears throat> So they didn't want you to get them mixed up in thinking that those are Africans. Uh -huh. But they're Arabs. <clears throat> and if you go back also, the question when we talk about the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. we talk about um, that region. And we talk about today, we're talking about Iraq, Iran, um, areas mainly, when you talk about the um, Tigris and Euphrates. So who who owns that land? Around the Tigris and the Euphrates? Yeah, and, and the biblical Canaan and all of that. Arabs again, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly who they are. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, y'all seen the thing that talks about um 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 Arab um the um <clears throat> the Arabs who actually are running all those different areas, you can tell by their complexion. Yeah. They're not totally white, and they're not black. Right. They're a mixture. And that's why they're um, what they call Arabs. Now, they can go either way. And what they actually say is that they believe that they're Caucasian, living on the continent of Africa. Right. So an Egyptian will say he's a Caucasian, not an African. <clears throat> then you ask him, why are you living in Africa? Why aren't you living in the Caucasus Mountains? Which you say you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we're talking specifically about um, the people of a particular land or a particular group of people on the planet, we have to consider not just who's living there, but <clears throat> the time frame of what we're talking about. So when we're talking about a people, we have to look at what time frame are we talking about 500 BC? Mm -hmm. Or we talked about the year 2000. Mm -hmm. The same thing, and you have to figure out which, which landmass. So it deals with three major things you have to consider. The people, their land, which is their location, and the time. Mm -hmm. And as you will see over time, that they will be changing. So that you don't get the people mixed up who call themselves European Jews today who mix mm -hmm. up with the people of the Bible. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do with each other. That's right. But you would think they do because yeah. they said that they're Jews. <coughs> but they are not. But there's Bible scripture to tell us that there will be a time that in the book of Revelation that the people who say they are Jews, as you and said, not. And are not. Okay. And about the time. Mm -hmm. So the key was that that first paragraph is trying to address that and helping us realize that that's why he says nothing could be further from the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's what's been implanted into our mind. So that's what is truth as we see it or as mm -hmm. we perceive it. <clears throat> So that's the reason why I was um, trying to get people's background so I can make sure that I know which which areas we agree on and which areas you might not be have knowledge about. Mm -hmm. But whatever we're studying, that'll be one of my emphasis in my books on people of color in the Bible. The emphasis will be for us to understand who the people are. We need to know what time frame and we need to know what location we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So don't let nobody fool you and say, well, these are the people, you know, can't you see them? Okay, so that's um, one of the major aspects. Now, when we're talking specifically about time, we um, there's a time when you go through history, you're going to see that the Greeks, when the Greeks came on the stage of action, the Greeks went into conquered different lands, 
<clears throat> so when they got to Egypt, they realized the knowledge and the civilization that they had. Now, prior to that, the Greeks, Romans, and all of these different European nations were barbarians. That's what the Greeks called the Romans. And then that's what the Romans called the Germans and the Anglo-Saxons. So they called themselves barbarians because they didn't have a civilization. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when they came to Egypt and came to Africa, they realized that this was a civilized people. They were not barbarians. Mm -hmm. And so they went to their schools and were educated. That's where you get Pythagoras' theorem, who mm -hmm. wasn't created by Pythagoras. He learned that in Egypt. That's where you have a lot of philosophy. That's where you have... <clears throat> mathematics, numbers, all of these different things that were flowing and that was in in Africa that wasn't in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So as we move on in time, we're going to see this progression. And so what they did was that they decided that they would take the knowledge, rewrite it into Greek. And then once it was written into Greek, then they could take the other books written in Greek and Latin, and then they can put it in and um, take those books and hide them or burn them mm -hmm. so that no one would be able to ever discover what the truth is. And then once they had it, then they would rewrite history and put themselves in it where they are not. Mm. Yeah. Now, I don't know if y'all yeah. ever heard of Josephus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he wrote in his book, that he wrote, The Antiquity of the Jews. He mm -hmm. has in there that he mentions that the um, Greeks were making a malumation of history and inserting themselves in where they did not exist. And they rewrote history in, in, to put them in light as if everything began with the Greeks. Right. So when you go through history and you go to school and different other places, what you find is that they say, okay, let's begin with ancient history, and they all begin with, guess who? The Greeks. Yeah. <clears throat> but the Greeks were late to come on the stage of action. That's right. So that's where, so, so they rewrote history, and the Europeans ever since have always been starting history with themselves, as if no one else had history, and that and that's why there's a book called Stolen Legacy, that they stole all of the Egypt, ancient African material and claimed it to themselves. But that's yeah. where we find ourselves and that's where we're beginning. So when you read the Old Testament, what language do they tell you it's written in? Aramaic yeah. and Hebrew. Okay, Hebrew. And what do they say the New Testament's written in? Greek. Greek. Okay, now, with what I just said to you, could it have been written in Greek? No, well, we discovered that a while back. Well, but we were told and thought that it came from the Hebrew language. Okay, we're going to um, do some definitions probably in the next session. Um, after we take a pause, we'll um, I, I'm going to put up a glossary, and we're going to define all the different terms. Mm -hmm. of what is what is Hebrew. Mm -hmm. In the new book, I don't know, I, it's, it's, it's talked about in the old book, but it's not um, talked about and amplified to the point of, <clears throat> I don't know if you got what is Greek, I mean, what is Hebrew? Betty, did you get that out of the book of what is the Hebrew language? Uh, in the adult book? Mm-hmm. No, if you got it, you got it. If not, we'll come back to it. No, no. Okay, no problem. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, when you say, do I have it, do I have it in this book or do I have it in my mind? In your mind. Do you know what it, oh, well, what no. the book said and quoted and got the information of what is Hebrew language? No, no, what is the Hebrew no. language? Okay. In, this, in, the, in, in the updated version, we saw that, and so we started clarifying it. Made things okay. just a little clearer. <laughs> And now, is this book called it. People of Color? Yes, it's called People of Color in the Bible, Volume 1. Okay. Establishing preliminaries, establishing mm -hmm. a foundation. 
Okay. That's mm-hmm. what we're looking at now. Okay. So that's why I said we'll start with that book. Okay. To make it a little easier so we can understand what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as the names and everything changed, then it became um, almost impossible that when everybody was being colonized, what did they usually do when they colonized you? Uh, took away your language. You had to learn the language of your captors. That is correct. And their history. Right. Mm-hmm. From their, or his story, from his perspective. Mm-hmm. And so then as generations go on, if it wasn't passed down from generation to generation, your language, as in the, as in the movie Roots, <clears throat> You would forget who you are, what you are, and now you have become this new thing. Mm-hmm. And you would forget who you are, and they tried to forget him, to forget his name as Toby, and that he was from Africa. And what tribe he was from and all of that, they tried to make him lose all of that and just say, you're American, and that's it. You're not an African anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's where we um, find ourselves. <clears throat> So when we start talking about the Bible, and we start talking about, um, so the New Testament couldn't have been written in Hebrew for a number of reasons. The first reason is, I mean, not Hebrew, in Greek, because mm-hmm. the Greek was a, um, a sophisticated language, and it was a language of the elite. So you had to go to college to learn it. So we know that the, the um, apostles that they were fishermen right mm-hmm, I'm you ever heard of fishermen um writing in the elite language uh-huh. or speaking the elite language <laughs> no they couldn't so that's why number one just on face value the bible the new testament couldn't have been written in greek but that's what they tell us mm-hmm. because everything began with the greek Hmm. Right. So that's how they and then and so that so usually when you go to seminary school, you're never gonna be told this. You're just gonna be told that hey, this is written in Greek, let's study the Greek. Yeah, no use to go back. Then. So if now it wasn't written in the Hebrew, in the Greek language, what was the language? Aramaic. Uh, uh, written or uh, translated to from Aramaic. Okay. Mm-hmm. We on the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then what we'll do is, uh, like I said, once we get through the glossary, the glossary is going to define all of these different terms okay. for us to make life a little easier, so that we know what um, what we're talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. So now, so now, remember, the next paragraph is going to now bring you to the 1960s. Okay. But you have to keep in mind everything we just said. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, you're going to miss the point of what was um, the person trying to um, explain to us. Okay? okay? All right. The next paragraph. After the creation of the Black Studies program at several American universities, the scholarship of several Bible uh, Black professors was questioned in the late 1960s when they taught that the people of the Bible were people of color. Dr. John Henry Clark and Dr. Yosef Ben Yohanan were two of the leading African studies professors who helped establish the Association of the Study of Classical African Civilization, ASCAC, clearly advocated this perspective in their writing. On the other hand, the official black church organization rejected these teachings as heresy at that time. The church's viewpoint was that the King James Version of the Bible and its Eurocentric view was complete. People accepted the pictures as the absolute word of Yah. This was not to be challenged or questioned by black scholarship. Okay, so what are y'all getting out of this paragraph? Uh, well, it, it seems the, the overall gist for me is that um, 
our very own people are our own very worst enemies because we yeah. accepted a view in our own minds of something. When a truth tries to present itself, we sort of uh, shut it down. Actually, the Europeans don't have to do very much. Uh, we reject it uh, because we've been given this picture. KJV is, is um, infallible, uh, even though it's written by a people uh, that hold us in, in, in subservience. So I, I see here where when those who had gotten the vision that maybe something is a little wrong here and it was trying to bring to us, um, we couldn't accept it. So we aided the enemy actually yeah. in staying with their view of things and it helped to keep us where we are in subjugation to this very day. And how long ago was that? Well, according to this, it started in the in the late 60s, where the awakening was trying to come forth. That puts it around 50 years ago. Yep. Mm hmm A whole generation. Hmm. Interesting. Uh-huh. 50 years, okay. Okay. Now there's some, some important um, facts. <clears throat> Now, some schools still don't teach or just beginning to teach black studies. And as you know, are they are they approaching it from this standpoint that you're mentioning, or where are they focusing um, their their affinity on? Okay, well, let me explain what happened so you can see what happened and how we got two camps out of this thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, people who were studying black history, some of the major ones was John Henry Clark and Joseph Ben Jehakovin, them too, and there was many others that was teaching black studies. And you had Ivan Van Sertiman, you had um um but they um <clears throat> the destruction of black civilization by Chancellor Williams, which is an outstanding book. Mm -hmm. and, um so there was a number of them, and they were now the new black studies scholars because now people were demanding in the 60s when they were doing civil rights that, hey, we, 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 I mean, we do have some history. Yeah. And so they were, so, so these people were being accepted in the American universities for teaching this, for teaching because they had the background. Now, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Ben, as he's called, he, he was an African Hebrew, Ethiopian mm -hmm. Jew, as we might call him. That's where he grew up. So he knew this area very well. So when mm -hmm. he started teaching it from that perspective, everybody was getting blown, you know, like, hey, 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 hey you can't do that. <clears throat> or that, um, so these were the challenges even though he could show, and that's why I said we have to understand of what time we're talking about, who the people are, and in what location. But mm -hmm. if we, all we had was the European Jews at that time in our mind, right. not knowing there was such thing as an Ethiopian Jew. Ethiopian Jews, they didn't allow to come out to let the world know until the 70s, 80s, 90s, and so forth, and they started um, um, transferring them over to Israel. So prior to that, there was no such thing. So this is, so now you had your typical um, <clears throat> African-American feature and teacher and students and so forth who had gone to the schools and have seen the other picture <laughs> and were saying that, hey, how can you say this? Okay, and so what they did was they said this was the truth and they were able to show it through history, but our leadership in the black churches wasn't ready for it, and so they started to call them heretics. Right. Now, some might call me a heretic for writing a book on people of color in the Bible. Right. And call you heretics for even studying it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the same, but we're talking about that 50 years ago. 
We're not talking about this is now. This is 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So what had happened was at that point, this these black study scholars were ostracized from teaching that and were ostracized from accepting. So basically those that have were studied, then they realized that, hey, since this is what's going on, hey, we're not going to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can't be part of something that's not true because this is not even true. And so the African Studies group was pushed to the side called heretics. And so they were not allowed to be part of the movement under that aspect. Mm -hmm. So basically yeah. what happened was you have two groups. So you have mm -hmm. your Black Studies Department and you have your church. And many people will tell you, hey, studying Black Studies isn't good. It'll confuse you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And many people don't look at that to, because, I mean, that under, okay, so at that point, you know, you can go to churches and you talk about black history. Some people didn't allow that. They didn't allow, a matter of fact, during the 60s, they didn't, some churches were mentioned that um, that if you were caught marching, you would get this fellowship. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So these are what was, that's what we're talking about. So when that got to that point, that you could not even identify with who you were. And I found another thing, Emmanuel and Mo, too that when you talk about um, teaching or learning uh, history, black history, you also fall right back into the line in public schools and public universities of meeting their curriculum criteria. So there are some materials that will not be allowed and there are some materials that will be allowed. And therefore, you still won't be getting the truth of the history of the heritage either. And I found that to be uh, true as well. Okay, good, good point. <laughs> okay, so this is what was happening then. And so today we have black studies um, separate from black, his, black um, from, from the Bible, basically. Mm -hmm. So now people are coming around, <laughs> the next generation, these are coming around who are talking about um, white people, which is the um, name and glory, what was that book that you mentioned? Return to Glory. Yeah, that that was written by a white man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's talking about black history, and I have spoke with him um, on the phone, <clears throat> and he's getting to all the black churches. All the black churches are letting him in the door, and all he's That's talking right. about is just Egypt is in Africa. He's really not telling us. That what I'm teaching. He's not telling us that the Hebrews were black. He just says the Egyptians, you know, they were black. Mm -hmm. And they're letting him in all the churches. So I said, hey, man, can I, you know, speak to some of these churches to take them to the next level? He said, no. The white man said no? Yeah. That's not his job. His job is to do what? Is to not link it to the Bible, but still after you leave the church, that, hey, 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 yeah, yeah, the Africans were black. Yes, Egypt was black. Now, what has that got to do with the Hebrews? Nothing. Hmm. So he's going around doing all that, and people are concluding that. And, you know, and I said, hey, if you're really interested in it, and I found out he's only interested in making money off of us, making merchandise of our soul again. Of course. Of course. But that was, you know, that was uh, just an eye-opener because people told me to talk to him. And hey, you know, hey, they already prepared the foundation that now black people are accepting that black history was okay. But I said, yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, but that's a generation ago. We knew that in the 60s. Mm -hmm. In 2011, we need to now be able to apply it to the Hebrews, take it to the next step, not just leave it there. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's where we found our, you know, self. And so, now that they're, you know, that they're accepting it, it still has to come from a white man. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for us to accept it coming from black people. But eventually we're, you know, coming around to it. So that's one of the things that we had mentioned here. Now, he makes mention that the church viewpoint in what was read, the church viewpoint was that the King James Version of the Bible and its Eurocentric view was complete. 
You can't question the Eurocentric viewpoint. And we already talked about that the Greeks have changed everything. So this Eurocentric viewpoint was now putting them in the center of the Bible. Such that when you read about the um, 1260 days, they talk about the persecution in Europe. Hmm. So wait a minute, well, what does the Europeans got to do with an African Bible? Mm-hmm. No, we're the center of it. So they said, hey, and then when you read about the 1260, the 2300 days, it's all about the Pope going into bondage, going into exile, and then it's going all the way on in time so you can get to 1844, mm -hmm. which is still built around to who? The Europeans. So these were all European, Eurocentric interpretations of a black book. So wait now, are you saying then that uh, those biblical prophecies of the Adventist Church with the 1260 days? Okay, well, we, first of all, we don't, or while we're recording, we don't mention names of denominations. Okay. You can, have, um, you can talk about a lot of prophecy because there's lots of prophecies that are out there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you saying, though, that that has nothing to do with the... Uh, well, I'm going to let you... We're going to figure that out as we study. Mm-hmm. Okay. No problem. I said that's why, we, that's why I want to know where everybody is. Because there are... I'm just saying, if you look at the 1260, they mm -hmm. talk about 1260 of persecution. Where? Mm-hmm. Where is it? It's in Europe, right? That's the Waldenses, that's the people hiding away from the caves and all that. That's all it's about. Mm -hmm. Then the question is, why would Yahweh put a prophecy about a people that's not in the book? Mm -hmm. But we're not supposed to question that. Hmm. Okay, so you just buy into all of these different things. And if you look at it, all that last day prophecy, you know, these different churches, it don't matter what denomination, basically. Mm -hmm. But you'll find out that it's all Eurocentric. It's all centered around the Europe as the center of the universe of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So then that's why when they said the King James Version of the Bible was complete with its Eurocentric view. And so now we're trying to find out, well, if the people of the Bible were people of color, that's who he's addressing this thing to. Mm -hmm. He's not addressing it to the Europeans. We're not saying the Europeans can't read it, but you can't make yourself the center focus. No, not if it wasn't talking about you. For sure. Right, that's where that catch was. And so basically, once you have they, um, Clark and the rest of them were saying that um, that the two were two of the leading African study professors who helped establish the association for the study of, guess what? It says that right in the paragraph you read. Mm -hmm. They helped build and study this classical African civilization. Mm -hmm. ASCAC, it's called. Mm -hmm. so, now, are you going to be able to show as we go further, you were saying how this does apply to the Hebrew um, Israelites? Yes. All right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be going through to identify. That's what my book is called, People of Color in the Bible. All so right, once now. you get the book and get the children's book, you'll know. Okay. And that's why we're just saying, <clears throat> who knows, you know, where are you so that we can bring everybody along. <clears throat> Some people will say, oh, Emmanuel, you assumed everybody knew that. <laughs> mm. And you shouldn't have done that. That's what my friend would tell me. Mm-hmm. Which is correct, because everybody's not at the same level. So we just want to make sure we get a background so we can bring everybody to the same level. Okay. So we're not, you know, sort of lost. So when you hear, so in here, that's what that paragraph was mainly saying. What we're going to do is take a 15-minute break. Okay. I hope you appreciated this study. Um, as we said, that if you're interested in learning about the real truth, about the Bible, if you are wondering what book or e workbook we are reading from, it is entitled People of Color in the Bible, Volume 1, by Dr. William 
Emmanuel, Doctor of Engineering and Doctor of Divinity, also known as Doctor Eman, the Energy and Electric Man. Now remember, we're learning the real truths about the people of the Bible and their history. Remember, we're just covering what? The preliminaries. We're trying to establish a foundation for understanding the ABCs of the Bible. To follow along with this online class and study guide we have for you as our workbook, you will need to have the e-workbook, POC, People of Color. To join the online class or to get the e-workbook or back videos, contact Dr. Eman through his email address. That is Emmanuel at ESNSCorp dot com. For more information, as we mentioned, Dr. William Emanuel, Dr. Eman, the energy man, we've given you the email address, and now we're giving you the um, website, www.peopleofcolor, no spaces, the numeric number one dot com. And when you visit our website, you will look, you'll be able to see a schedule of events, the ebooks, workbooks, books, charts, and also schedule a workshop for Dr. Emmanuel at your church or your organization or your school or your college or your university. He also does three-day and 10-day cleanse programs on the health. Also register for the online class and the webinar. We thank you for being part of this study. We pray that we will hear from you again. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Have a nice day.